Well, 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 if it isn't 2022, that's a lot of 20s, and I've got one more for you. This is the top 20 monsters that new players should save, or in some cases, actively seek out. One way or another, these monsters are fabulous, and you would be remiss not to have them in your collection. One quick note before we get started, though, Fran and Lauren are not going to be making an appearance on this list, because you should just know by now that Fran and Lauren are going to take number one and number two, and instead of doing that, because that'd be boring, you should just go get a Fran and a Lauren. I also took into account replaceability as a factor when making this list. So any monster that makes an appearance on this list of 20 offers something that I found to be kind of unique and difficult to replace. That's why you'll see one monster instead of maybe another monster that you love. And finally, no five stars because you should just, you should just keep all those. <laughs> With all that out of the way, number 20 is Lapis. So many people feed Lapis. Just know, just like, why? Keep her. The reason why she's so far up on the list is because Lapis doesn't necessarily fit into any particular team comp, but she's very helpful in places like farming Famon, starter TB12 teams, and... Well, that's actually where I ended the sentence in the script, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Oh, but put her on Despair in TOA with 2A Raok, Verd, and the Water Homunculus also on Despair. That's a lot of AoE first skills and you're going to get a ton of stuns. It's really fun. Number 19 is Jansen the Dark Viking. If you happen to come across one of these bad boys, then save it for way later. He is part of a hyper-efficient R5 team called BJR5. He's the J on that team, and it leverages an interaction between his third skill and the fact that Balgar gains stacks on his passive with death triggers. But he's this high up on the list because you're really not going to be using him for a while. Just make sure that if you find one, keep it. You're going to want it. Okay, number 18 is Colleen, who you have probably mistaken for a mystical scroll in the magic shop on the Sky Island. She serves a purpose on teams like the aforementioned BJR5 team and some starter necro teams. The only reason why she's this high up on the list is because she's super easy to get, so if you don't end up saving one, you can just refresh the shop a couple times until you find one. That's what I did. With that, <laughs> you gotta, gotta be with that being said, Lulu is number 17 for the exact same reason. You want to keep her because once she's second awakened, she is borderline problematic. Even after getting nerfed, she is still my second immunity option in RTA and she probably will be yours too. Here comes number 16. Agar is a hybrid stripper, damage dealer, bruiser, monstrosity amalgamation. The dude is a powerhouse in RTA and I forget how this sentence ends. The dude is a powerhouse in a lot of the PvP formats in Summoner's War, and he's technically farmable because you can buy pieces of him in the guild shop. Great, I really hope that didn't the recording, but it was worth it. I should have said this for Jansen, but whenever you summon an LD monster, meaning light or dark, you should keep it if it's your only copy. I should have said that earlier, I don't know why I'm just thinking of it now, in fact it was in the script earlier, but you know what, I'm only human. But just know that Shaman, specifically after being Second Awakened, is going to crush all of the dark bosses in the game, including, but not limited to, the Necro B12 boss and the boss of Calderon. Shaman offers a lot for a team, in addition to an attack lead for all of your light monsters in a team. He also heals on skill 1, does crazy damage on skill 2, and his passive, well his passive is the part that I'm actually recommending him for. He does bonus damage when brought specifically against dark monsters, so he's going to make your rage sets go way further. Number 14 is Elucia the Water Fairy. She got a huge buff after Second Awakening was introduced to the game, and in a brilliant display of dramatic irony. One of the first three monsters you get in the game is the perfect counter to our app icon. Artemiel has never recovered from this. So keep her, she's great in RTA because she has two forms of hard control on her first and third skill, and she has a heal and attack bar push on her second skill, so I don't, I don't know who decided to give her such an amazing toolbox, but like, dang, she is a carpenter. What am I on about? Why have... Second Week in Vigor has made it into a few videos on the channel. Why was that the hardest thing I've had to say all day? Yet another example of a 2A that had to have their third skill kind of slapped around a little bit via a balance patch. He's really good in DB12 teams, he's amazing in guild content, and you can use him in RTA. However, this is another monster that for new players isn't exactly a necessity. You're just going to want to have at least one or maybe five when you get deep into guild content. How many Vigors each, each one of you have? <laughs> okay, yeah, this like has three. three. Oh, yeah, Brian, four. four for <laughs> whale, yeah. whale. I got, I got two. So I have five. Oh, I guess what? 
If you get a Vigor, you'll use him. He has a heal and a three turn defense break. Just be sure to get one eventually is what I'm saying. Okay, this last dozen or so monsters on the list is where it turns from make sure that you save these monsters if you happen to cross them for later too. You should actively seek these out because they will help you on your summoner's war adventure. So with that said, taking up the slot at number 12, it's Thrain. The Dark Grim Reaper. Thrain can apply dots, that's damage over time, via a non-hitting skill, which is perfect for places like TOA, where you might be up against monsters who can counterattack you. Turns out not hitting people is pretty fantastic. He can also be used as a component in your GB12 dot team if you happen to be missing another daughter. That's daughter, not daughter. I think people will just know that. Thrain also has a conditional stun on his third skill, so for all those reasons, he can also be a great last pick in RTA. Number 11, who has the fastest base speed in Summoner's War? Is it Masha? What are you on about, man? Oh, that's right, it's Spectra. Spectra can also be a damage dealer and a soft control unit. What do I mean by soft control? On his third skill, he has an attack bar pushback, along with attack break and a slow. This will hopefully give your team another lap around the enemies if you're bringing him into TOA, or he might prevent the towers from taking a turn and giving the boss immunity in Dragon's B12. Number 10 is Farmable Ganymede. There, I said it, I've been holding it in for so long and I just needed to get that off my chest. He reduces your cooldowns and hot take, provoking an enemy for one turn is kind of like putting them on cooldown time for one turn. Isn't that just the hardest hitting journalism you've heard in all of 2022? Granted, we're only one month in, so there's plenty of time on the channel, we've already recommended that you use Mav on every single one of the Rift Beast teams. Technically, he even works on the Fire one, though there are potentially better choices out there. He's great in TOA, and hey, Mav is the host of Monster Lab, if you didn't know already. How's it going, guys? Number nine is Tatu, the Fire Pixie. Tatu is extra important after she's been 2 aid because then she'll be able to detonate all the dots that are on the enemy team, thus facilitating the whole GB12 dot team strategy to begin with, because you don't have to sit around for them to take a turn. Number 8 is Tyler on the Water Sill, who has some control options that are going to help you a lot in TOA. In addition to a 19% speed lead, he also has a freeze and slow on his third skill, and a second skill that works weirdly well with that, he can reduce everybody's attack bars all the way down to zero if they're slowed. Tyron is super helpful in places like TOA, or even as a last pick option in T- Dang it, there's so many initialisms! Why? In addition to being super helpful in TOA, he can also be your control pick in RTA, which is, funny enough, what I'm doing in RTA Season 20. So watch out for me, because I'm going to be picking Tyron. Number 7 is Melia, who has recently joined the Fusion Hexagram, so if you don't have one, there is something that you can do about it. Melia is a popular component of the GB12 dot team, because she has no choice but to put dots whenever she attacks an enemy. Also, don't six-star your Melias if you're just using them for giants. I don't know what you got planned, but if you're just doing it for the dot team, you don't need to six-star them. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Number 6 is the Wind Marshal Cat Naomi, who is the easiest monster to ruin in the game. Once Naomi is second awaken, she will auto crit as long as there is a debuff on the enemy. This makes her perfect for places like starting GB12 teams, because you're gonna have Lauren apply defense break, maybe there will be a brand from Crow, and then boom, you come in, ruined purely on crit damage because she auto crits for just, I already said big damage. She's gonna do that. Number five is Sath, the Fire Grim Reaper. Sath is the homie because his passive makes the whole dot strategy possible. He doubles the damage of every single dot in play. So, reminder, that also means dots on you. That rarely comes into play, but you know what? That's it, just something to keep your mind on. The reason why he's further down the list than Tatu is because even if Tatu isn't there to detonate the dots, his passive is still gonna be doing its thing. So that means that he's an awesome component for TOA teams. Like if you just wanna bring him along and you happen to have a Rika, or if you're using Beretta, something like that, he's going to just raise the efficiency of your TOA team. Number four is actually two monsters. So I guess this is the top 21 monsters new players should save. Talia and Sabrina need to share a slot because they're really great together. We recommend the Water Twins in places like Necro where they make the whole thing easy, or even in the Light Rift, where supposedly multi-hits are supposed to do less damage, but I guess if you just do this much damage, you can just do whatever you want. Number three, Lucian. Uh, do I even need to say anything about Lucian? Probably not, let's move on. Number two is Vertihile, the Fire Vampire, who is also in the Fusion Hexagram, so you can actively seek out this monster very easily if you don't have one. He's going to boost the attack bar of your entire team, including himself, by 20% every single time he crits, and he hits two times on both of his skills. So if you ruin him on 100% crit rate, then you're going to be taking more turns than you know what to do with, 
And if you have a trick routine, then you know exactly why this is amazing. He's also great in RTA as a counter to AoE control, or you can root him on Swift as your fastest unit to surprise people. And of course, number one, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw this coming, it's Crow, specifically Second Awaken, but also every single one of the Inugamis. Crow is a super valuable damage dealer, especially early. You're gonna be using him far into your Summoner's War career, but when it comes time to make the trick a routine, I promise you, you are going to be out of Inugamis and you're gonna be farming Garen Forest forever. So I'm telling you now, save every Inugami you get. Cool? Cool.